Alright guys, so I'm going to be showing you now how to create a JAR file uh, in VS Code. So we are currently on the Windows OS. Alright, so I'm going to show you this with a simple Java project. So here we have two Java source files, a class called person that just simply has one attribute, a name, a constructor, and a two-string method. You now have a main class, a standard main class with a static void main method that just simply prints the name of the person. All right, so before we can even do anything, make sure you have VS Code. Then you're going to want to make sure, especially if you're using Windows, on systems like Macs and Linux, this is less of a problem, but on Windows, if you want to be able to use the Java commands to create JAR files, to compile Java, Java files, then you're going to need to add Java to your path. So what does that mean? So basically, after you've installed Java, in downloaded and installed Java, Java will install at a specific location. Now, your terminal for it to be able to execute these Java commands it needs to know where the location of the um, Java was stored or installed so how do we point the terminal to that so what we're gonna do is to basically add Java to our path so what does that look like so when you install Java if you come here to your local disk and you go to program files and you should see a folder called Java inside there you should see a folder called JDK alright inside that folder you should see a folder called bin alright so this is where basically all your Java files are located what you're gonna do is copy this copy the path you're gonna right click on this PC go to properties then you're going to go click on advanced system settings click on environment variables then double click on path and then click on new and then paste it here after you do that click OK click OK and now we're gonna see if Java is on our path now how do we check if Java is in, on our path in the first place well we're gonna see if we can execute uh, Java commands in our terminal. So in VS Code, you can click on the menu option for terminal, click new terminal. Um, I would suggest to select the one that says CMD. Alright, so how do we know if Java is on our terminal or on our path, I should say? Well, if you just type Java here, you should see some output like this, right? If Java is not on our path, then you would see some output like uh, the command is not found or something like that. We can also do is just to say Java minus version or dash version, I should say, and it will show you the current Java version. All right, so that means Java is on our path. All right, so what's the use of something like this? Well, it means we can execute, we can compile Java source files. So usually to compile around these classes, I'd say something like this, Java, Java, asterisk Java. So this will compile all my Java files, create these dot class files, which is a, the Java bytecode. And I can execute this Java bytecode so I can run the main method by saying Java and then put the class that has the main method. And this will give us the output. But Alright, so generally when you're structuring a java project you want to structure it in a certain way so we like to have packages and then when we create our packages we can create a jar file from that all right so what i'm going to do first is to delete these dot class files because they're not going to be needed all right so since we're going to have everything in a package so a package is a folder that contains similar classes so since we're going to have everything in a package, we're going to have to tell Java that. So the, the first line um, in all your source files, 
make sure you put the name of the package on that first line. So we're just gonna call it package person. Alright, so that's what we're calling the package. All your source files, ensure you put package and what about you want to call the package. So in this case, we're calling all of these. Um, we're saying that all of these files are in the package person. Alright, so what we're going to have to do is to now organize our files so that all of these are in a folder called person. So what I'm going to do is create a folder called person. Then I'm going to move these two files into that folder. So I'm going to do this. Move. I'm going to do this. Move. All right. Now I'm going to create a folder called SRC. Oops. When you're creating the folder, my suggestion is this. Uh, press this button here so that it um, doesn't expand it. So it de-expands. Uh, that's just a word I came up with. Anyways, um, click outside here and then create the folder. Call it SRC. Make sure it looks something like this. Now we're going to do is move this person folder inside SRC. So here I am doing that now. All right, so you should see something like this. We have SRC slash person, and then you have these two files inside there. All right. Next thing I'm going to need is a folder called bin. So why do I need this folder when I'm going to be compiling my Java source files? We want all of those um, dot class files to be stored inside this bin folder. Uh, for those people who are going to be uh, creating Java doc, so Java doc is just a way to document your classes, then usually you'd have something like a docs folder. All right. So for this tutorial, we'll also run the command for that as well. Um, and then we're going to also need to have a resources folder. We're going to talk more about this soon enough. But once you have these folders, then we can begin. So the first thing you're going to have to do is to compile your Java files. So to compile your Java files, we're going to use a Java command. So it's Java minus CP. Then you put the class CP means class path. So it's basically um, where are all your packages located. So in this case, you're located in the SRC folder. So we're going to put SRC. Then you're going to put where you can find the Java files that you want to compile. You want to say SRC, then you say backslash, star, well, asterisk, dot Java. If you're on something like Mac or Windows, the slash would be turned around. So it'd be like this. Okay. So in this case, for Windows, turn it this way. And you put minus D. So minus D, or dash D, this basically is now saying, where do I want to store these class files that are going to be created here? We want them to be stored inside the bin folder. So we'll just put bin. I made a mistake here. It shouldn't be just src slash star.java or asterisk.java. It should be sr slash person slash star asterisk.java. Because all the Java files are actually inside the person folder, which is inside the SRC folder. If I press enter, this will compile all my Java files and the dot class files will be included inside this bin folder, inside a folder called person. All right? All right. So the next thing I want to do is probably you'd want to generate your Java docs, all right? So the command for that looks something like this. So it's a Java doc. Then we um, point it to where the source files are. So the things that we want to Java doc. So again, it's a src slash person slash star asterisk dot Java. I remember if you're using Mac or Linux, then the slashes would be the other way around. Right? Because this is window. It's gonna be this way. Oops, I think a lot of come right away. Anyway, so Java doc um, SRC slash person slash asterisk dot Java. And again, we say minus D. And in this case, we want to 
put the generated Java doc files inside the docs folder. So again, I'm going to press Enter, and then it's going to create all the Java docs, put them inside this docs folder. So here we have the Java doc for each class. All right. Now before we can create our um, our file, we're going to have to create something called a manifest file. So the manifest file, think of it like the instructions for your jar file. So it has certain things like our configurations for your jar file. Uh, so it has certain things like the version of the manifest file, where you can find the class path, and things like what is the main class or the name of the main class. So the class that has the static void main method. Alright, so we're going to have to create a manifest file. So inside the resources folder, you're going to click this button here. Uh, create a file called manifest.txt. Alright, so inside that file now, you're going to write this. So you're going to say manifest version. Hold on. Now I'm just going to put 1.0. Then you're going to put a uh, class path. And you're gonna put dot and then you're gonna put main class. So the main class is gonna be whatever the package name is, so as person dot whatever the name of the class is gonna be. So in this case, our main method is inside the main class. And then the last thing you need to do is you need to ensure that you have a blank empty line. So your file should have four lines. You should have a blank empty line at the end of the file. And see, all right, all right. So we'll have our manifest file created. All right. So basically, your structure should look something like this. So we'll have a bin folder with all of our class files. We have the docs folder. We have the resources folder with the manifest.txt, and we have the src person folder with all our source files. So now we can go ahead and create our jar file. So the command is jar cvfm. Then we'll put whatever we want to call the jar file. So in this case, I want to call it person.jar. Then we'll put the name of the manifest file. In this case, our manifest file is located inside the resources folder. So we'll just say resources. Then we'll put the slash. And then we'll say manifest.txt. And then we'll say dash c. Now we need to point Java to where the actual class files are. So it's inside the bin folder. So we'll just say bin. Then you need to put where you want or point Java to where you want the jar file to be stored when it's created. In this case, I'm going to put dot so that it's stored inside the current directory I'm running this command from. So it's going to be stored inside this folder here. And then after that, you can include, so this is option, you can include what folders you want to include in that jar file. So you can put folders inside jar files as well. Think of it like a zip file almost. So I'm going to include the SRT folder as well as the docs folder. All right. Um, so if I press enter now. Oh, I misspelled manifest.txt. So it should be manifest. Press enter. Alright, so if you see all of this nice stuff here, that means that it has created the jar file successfully. More importantly, you should see a file called person.jar. So how do we ex execute this? So I'm just typing CLS to clear the screen. So to execute this, we'll just simply say java minus jar. And then we'll put the name of the jar file. In this case, I call mine person.jar. Press enter. And we see that it works. Bob. Alright. Um, that's it.